Hi, hello, hi. So, uh, you may notice we are in seemingly a different location today. Rest assured, we are in the exact same apartment. I just don't have room for my filming setup right now. We had to move some stuff around to make the space a little more accessible. So for the time being, this is the setup. I'm uh, using my webcam and I'm using my Yeti mic and hopefully this will be good enough. I also just wanted to be able to like make videos organically and not have to you know, set aside three business days to just like set up the space and set up the shot and all that stuff. So before I get into today's topic, I just wanted to address my absence. I haven't been making videos for a little while. I just finished my first year of university. It was, it was interesting. A um, couple more years of that <laughs> up ahead. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk to you all about uh, bottom surgery. This is partly to update you all on my life and what I've been doing, but also because that's a big thing that's going on right now in terms of my transition and I like to make videos about my transition. So anyway, and people seem to have a lot of questions. So I'm going to be making more videos about this so I could talk about each kind of individual topic a little more in depth, but today is gonna be more of a like general rundown of like what I'm having done, why and how I'm having it done. So uh, I asked you all to send me your questions on Twitter and Instagram and uh, I have those here. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer those now. So first question is why am I having bottom surgery? Because of dysphoria mainly. Um, I, I realized that regardless of my results, um, any, bottom surgery would be better than staying the way that I am now in terms of my own dysphoria. I don't speak on behalf of everyone, I only speak on behalf of myself, but for me, I'm at a point of my dysphoria where it was, it's just, it's its unbearable. So that's why I want to have a bottom surgery. Where am I at in terms of my progression toward bottom surgery? So uh, it's a bit complicated. Right now I am gathering all of my papers. I have a file at the GRS clinic, which is where I'm having phalloplasty. And uh, one of my letters of recommendation was rejected, so now I need to pay for another letter of recommendation and talk to another therapist about why I want a penis. It's really thrilling to talk about. Uh, but now I'm doing that. So hopefully I will have an appointment for my consultation soon because yes, they don't give you a consultation until you've been approved to have phalloplasty. It's very, uh, very weird. And from there, I plan on having phalloplasty, not this coming summer, but the summer after that. I know it sounds like a long time, but realistically this is, um, this is the only timeline that works for me. I'll get more into that later on, but I do plan on starting hair removal as soon as possible. So we'll get to that. Ah, refreshing. What kind of bottom surgery are you having and why? Uh, so I'm having RFF phalloplasty. Uh, RFF stands for radial free flap forearm phalloplasty, I believe is the whole name of it. Try to say that three times really fast or just once. So what that means basically is that I'm having phalloplasty and the donor site will be my forearm as seen here beautiful donor site. Why did you choose phalloplasty over metoidioplasty? Um, it's personal for everyone. I don't want to like give my reasons and then sound like I'm trying to say that one is superior over the other when that's not at all the case. It's just each procedure works better for each person. And for myself personally, metoidioplasty wouldn't alleviate my specific dysphoria, the, the kind of dysphoria that I have, whereas it might work well for someone else. I chose phalloplasty because that was what I needed in order to alleviate my own bottom dysphoria. How are you going to approach having caretakers once you have phalloplasty? I remember you talking about your time recovering from top surgery was really unpleasant because one of your caretakers was not great and made you feel bad for asking for things. It's a bit of a mixed answer because phalloplasty involves more than one procedure. Um, and I'm also counting my hysterectomy in that because I haven't had a hysterectomy yet. So in terms of first stage of phalloplasty, I'm not really concerned because the person who's going to be coming to take care of me is um, a very, very, very close friend of mine who I trust wholeheartedly, who very much understands the situations that I've been in before. Um, this person has also had phalloplasty themselves. They also have EDS and they are also a medical professional. So, and they're also an angel. I love them with my whole heart. So I'm not worried about stage one. I'm mainly concerned with my hysterectomy because I have to do that 
about six months before Fallow. I'm probably gonna do it a year before Fallow since I have all this time anyway. But I'm worried about that because my friend won't be here for that. Uh, they live very far away. And so basically the way that I'm approaching it is I'm trying to just ground myself in my past experiences so that I'm not taken off guard if something similar does happen so that I'm just more emotionally prepared for anything uh, that can happen because a big part of why all that sucked aside from the obvious was just the really huge disappointment and like not expecting to be hurt like that. So now, uh, how are you dealing with uh, being disappointed? Well, I expect nothing. Uh, do you have any fears about bottom surgery? Why did you choose the doctor that you did? Okay, so the I'll start with the doctor part. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm having phalloplasty at the GRS clinic in Montreal, and my surgeon is going to be uh, Dr. Maude Belanger, I believe. I chose the GRS because that's what I have access to. <laughs> it's it's covered financially, so that's where I'm going. It's also really close to my house. We're talking like 12 minutes away. <laughs> so given my proximity to the clinic, it makes sense in case there are any complications that arise or if, if there's anything that happens, at least I'm not far away. However, I do have many concerns specifically with uh, this doctor. So the GRS is a great clinic. I, I know that a lot of people go there. Um, I'm not trying to like bash on them or anything like that. My own concerns are about the surgeon herself. She's a plastic surgeon with, I believe, some microsurgery experience. However, she's not a urologist, and that makes me concerned when you also consider the fact that Montreal has a higher than average complication rate for urethral lengthening. In my own, this is in my own observations. This isn't, I haven't conducted any formal studies to come to this conclusion, but it's just, I've just noticed that uh, they tend to have a lot of the same complications that come up. Um, and I'm not just talking like strictures and fistulas, I'm talking about uh, significant hair regrowth in the urethra and it happens all the time amongst some other things so i'm i'm trying to just the way that i'm managing that is i have a lot of questions for my surgeon when i go in and see her i'm going to ask her about the procedures that they use um and how those procedures have been adapted given their past experiences with such and such complications that have arised. Um, so that's, I'm just gonna try and get as prepared as I can. I'm also going to be starting laser hair removal and electrolysis on my arm as soon as possible, given the fact that they have such a high rate of uh, hair regrowth in the urethra. Part of that being that because the time between when you have your consultation and surgery usually is about a year or a little less, like nine months, for example, and that's not always enough time for someone to remove all the hair from their arms. So given that I'm having surgery in two years, I'm hoping that I'll just be able to not have that issue because I'll have plenty of time to make my forearm not hairy. Not that I have a lot of hair or, or any to begin with. Um, it's, yeah, so there's that. Fears about bottom surgery. So the thing that scares me the most, I'm sorry if this video is like really boring. It wasn't meant to be like a comedic video. It's just, it's, this is an update. I'm, I'm making a dick, so. What concerns me uh, most about any part of my medical transition is the feeling of lack of control. I felt that way when I started tea. I was like, you know, what if I lose my hair? And like, what if, you know, finasteride doesn't help? And you know, what if, what if all these things happen? You know, what if testosterone doesn't affect me exactly the way that I want it to? And there's that just surrendering of control to what your body will do. And uh, that's, that's really like, that's tough for me. I felt that way after top surgery too, where it's like, what if, something happens like what if what if my chest doesn't turn out exactly the way that i want it to so i've had a lot of time to work through this and um the way that i'm managing it is just by managing my expectations mostly um it also helped to come to the realization that i was like regardless of what it looks like as long as it's there it's an improvement over my current situation for myself for my dysphoria not for everyone just just talking about me <laughs> so with that said i'm just basically trying to manage my expectations so that uh, hopefully I could also manage my fear because then worst case scenario would still be something that I am prepared for going into surgery, but I know that I can't be prepared for everything. So that's a little hard. How bad is the GRS clinic with disabled people? Should I look into having surgery elsewhere than Montreal? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. Um, if it's any indication, I have yet to actually be able to get in for my consultation, despite having a file there for a while now, um, mainly because of the papers that I need, and, and they work with you. They've been very responsive and helpful with me, but like some of the papers that my doctors need to fill out ask questions 
like, on a sunny day, how long can your patient walk? And like, how many stairs could your patient do? It asks about things like asthma and like things that I understand are important for like anesthetic and I'll please, please don't start yelling at me in the comments, be nice. But it's just, just all that to say, it's made it um, longer for me to get in with them because of the fact that uh, I have a disability. So I don't know if that necessarily means that they're bad with disabilities. I haven't had the chance to experience that yet, but it does, take a little longer for us to actually get our foot in the door because of our disabilities. So stay tuned to find out more, I guess. What are your concerns and hopes about phalloplasty? So my main concerns, other than the ones I mentioned before, would have to do with like, for example, before I get into this trigger warning, um, self-harm and self-harm scars. I'm concerned about my donor site because I have some self-harm scars here and specifically I have a numb spot right here that's numb to surface sensation so like it doesn't feel any sort of scratching or tickling but it does have like deeper sensation like it feels pressure and stuff like that but it won't feel like there's no thermal sensation. I can't tell if something's hot or cold. I can't tell if something is tickling or touching or whatever so I'm a little concerned about that but also this part of my arm I'm pretty sure, uh, from what I understand, is going to be in my urethra. So I'm hoping it won't be that big of a, an issue. Another concern of mine is just my disability. Like I'm worried that I'll be rejected because of my disability. I'm not I'm not too worried about that because I do know people who've had phalloplasty with EDS. So if they reject me, I'm just going to go to a different surgeon. And if I'm rejected by the GRS, then that other surgeon would actually end up being covered by default. So like it's not, there are, there are options but I'm just worried about that. And I'm also worried about the potential for my surgeon to not want to intervene on um, making any adjustments after surgery. If there are any complications that arise that involve scarring, I'm worried that they'll just be like, we're not gonna try to fix that. We're just going to assume that that's because of your disability and that it's okay, as opposed to like a doctor who would actually proactively try to like, let's go in and let's, you know, do a revision. But again, if that happens, I'm going to just try to go somewhere else to a doctor who would be willing to do a revision. So I'm, I'm kind of just trying trying to take it one step at a time, you know? My last concern would be about like just uh, implants. Like I'm worried because the uh, erectile device that I want that's specifically for trans people is not available here. Like it's available upon exception, but you have to make a special application for it. And then you might end up having to like pay a whole lot for it. And then if you need to have it replaced, you have to go through that whole process again. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm a little worried about that. Um, I'm also worried about like my body potentially rejecting implants. So there's the like, you know, I could get through stage one and stage two of phalloplasty, but then come stage three, even if everything went really smoothly, the last two stages, what if, you know, I reject the implant? So that's just, you know, me doing what I do with my brain. In terms of my hopes for phalloplasty, uh, I, I want to pee standing up so bad. Like I really, for me, peeing standing up is a really important part. And I really hope that I'm able to do that post-op. I probably won't be able to do it after the first stage because it seems as though the Montreal technique involves doing urethral lengthening in two steps. I know that they're not the only one to do that, but just throwing that out there in case you were unaware, um, you could ask them to do it all in one shot, but they recommend doing it in two separate procedures. And given, again, the complication rates in Montreal with urethral lengthening, I would err on the side of caution and let them do it that way. But eventually I would love to be able to pee standing up. That'd be fantastic. Aesthetically, again, I'm trying not to really get my hopes up too high because everyone's body is different. Everyone heals differently. So I don't want to go in there with this idea of like, this is what it needs to look like. I kind of just want to accept that it will look like what it looks like. It's my body. It's going to do what it does. And I want to just be happy with however it turns out. So yeah, those are, those are my hopes. Are you concerned about scarring and questions that might come of that? Uh, so I'm assuming this question is about the donor site, like the the scarring on the forearm. Personally, I'm not concerned about scarring, mainly because scars don't bother me. Uh, the forearm scar has absolutely never bothered me. Um, it's never been a concern of mine, so I'm, I'm not worried about that aesthetically. I do have some concerns about scarring given the fact that I'm a piano player and I'm worried about any potential limitations to mobility and dexterity, but with enough physical therapy, I'm hoping that I'll be able to play piano about as well as I do now because I lost a lot of my ability to play piano because of EDS and finger and wrist dislocations and all that fun stuff. So, you know, it's not exactly like things are picture perfect right now anyway. So yeah, I'm not super concerned about the scarring, especially not visually. If people have questions, I'll just 
make something up. And then if they get mad because it's so completely absurd, maybe you don't ask people questions about their bodies, I don't know. Are you concerned about potential complications? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't. However, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that oftentimes the complication situation is blown out of proportion. A lot of people do act as though phalloplasty hasn't evolved at all, which is not true. It's been evolving for decades now, so I just want to throw it out there. Like, you know, do your research if you're afraid of complications and stuff. I would recommend following uh, Dr. Chen on Twitter because I find that he posts a lot of stuff. He posts like some studies and um, his website as well. He gives a lot of actual medical information and it's not just like anecdotal. He'll actually share like peer reviewed sources, which I think is super rad. Um, I'd love to go to him if I could, but I'm all the way in Montreal. Even if I could find a way to have it covered to go to Dr. Chen, I'm still like over six hours away by flight. And it's just, it's a bit far for me, I find. Um, I would rather be closer to here, but might go to Chen for a glands revision because I have a feeling I probably will end up wanting a glands revision. Um, I know they tend to flatten, so, and I, I just aesthetically like his results. So that's, that's a possibility in the future. Who knows? Is there anything that you're not really looking forward to with bottom surgery and why did you choose fallow? Well, I already went over the why I chose fallow, but uh, what am I not looking forward to? I don't know how to talk about this without it being like, I don't know, just a lot of information, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. I'm, I'm concerned about uh, going to the bathroom. I already have a metabolic condition gastroparesis and uh, that causes delayed stomach emptying, I guess is the easiest way to explain it. I'm worried about using the bathroom after bottom surgery because I'm worried that I won't be able to and that that'll cause some issues because like all the stitches and all that stuff going on. I'm worried about the pain associated to that. I'm worried about needing a catheter for a really long time. I'm just, that's, that's the stuff that I'm worried about. I don't want to have to have a catheter over and over and over again, but I'm trying to prepare myself for potentially needing a catheter for a long time or needing one put in and taken out because again, there could be urethral uh, lengthening complications that arise. So I'm just, I'm trying to get ready for that, but that's the part I'm looking forward to the absolute absolute least because I have, I want to say a pretty low emotional distress tolerance for that kind of pain. But then again, I don't know how I would gauge that as like a high tolerance, low tolerance. It's just something that stresses me out a lot and that I don't really enjoy. But then again, I don't think a lot of people do enjoy that. So I'm trying to tell myself that worst case scenario, um, I have phalloplasty. If the urethral lengthening doesn't work, I'll still have to pee sitting down. If I don't have phalloplasty, I know for sure I'll have to pee sitting down. If I do have phalloplasty, there's a good chance that I'll be able to pee standing up. And if I do end up having to pee sitting down, I know that I could handle that because I literally do that now and have been doing so my entire life. So the only difference would be that I'm peeing sitting down, but I also had phalloplasty. So still a gain in my in my books, in, in, in terms of my own dysphoria. Um, so no matter what, it still feels like a net gain at the end of the day. I'm like the worst thing that could happen is that I end up back where I am now. Is there any concern of the laser hair removal making your skin condition flare up? Yes, actually, that's a really good question. Yeah, I'm uh, so I have um, have a lot going on with my skin. I have several different types of rash on my arm. I'm trying to get that under control now. I tried to book an appointment with a couple of dermatologists. They said no, that they didn't want to work with me because of having EDS and because I'm looking to treat a site on my skin that I plan to use for a full thickness graft. And they're like, ah, it's a little out of my out of my field. And I was like, all right, chill. So what I've been doing is treating it myself. Uh, I use a combination of Siva, S Siva, Seva, Siva. I don't know. It's a an acne wash that I use on my arm. I put witch hazel and I use uh, two different kinds of creams. I don't know. Anyway, it's been <laughs> It's been working. If you're more interested in hearing in depth about how I'm treating the rash on my arm, I could make a video about that. Specifically, once I start laser hair removal, I could talk about it at length. But so far, it's been working. My rash is not as bad as it used to be. And I'm hoping that it just continues to heal and that if it does get triggered by the hair removal, that the same course of treatment will just help to manage that. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Or that I could find a doctor who's not afraid of treating me. That would be fantastic. And I think that's it for the questions. Hopefully that gives you a good uh, general rundown. I figured answering questions would be better than rambling about it at length. But I could make more videos about like what the process is like to get in at the GRS and all the papers I've had to fill out, laser hair removal, anything that you all want to know. I'm here for to talk about. I don't want to be that person who's like, I'm going to upload again. 
I don't know how often I'll upload because I want to do it because I actually have something to say rather than uploading because I want to adhere to a schedule. So hopefully you're all cool with the webcam, microphone, my plants, and wall in the background setup because this makes it much easier for me to film and I could just talk and not set up like the lights and all that stuff. So I don't know. Let me know what you think of this and if you like it then I could make more videos and I could also include my girlfriend in video. I'm pointing outside not because she's a plant but because she's sitting outside just in case you're weird. Did he throw her out? No I didn't so I would never. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's anything specifically that you'd like me to talk about. I'd be happy to do it and uh, it was nice seeing you. I miss you. Wow you look great. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right. Oh, bye.